We have a passion for the hunt. South Dakota is well known for its world-class pheasant hunting, but it also offers some of the finest whitetail hunting in the upper Midwest. On today's show, Passion for the Hunt's Nick Chido and Jeff Anderson head to Double P Ranch in Clark, South Dakota for a combination pheasant and archery whitetail hunt. Over the food plots, cattail sloughs, and native prairie grasses spread throughout Double P Ranch's 3,000 acres. Pulled up to the ranch and we're gonna have a little fun for the hunt tonight. Make sure the bows are still on. Hopefully, I'm gonna teach Chido how to hit the X. An X like normal? Oh! I'll take that at 30 yards. I'd say that's a dead deer at 30 yards, huh? jacked up it's the first night in camp the wind is kind of rocking out of the south but it's supposed to calm down a little bit We've got warm temps but my boy behind me he says there's big ones in these woods yeah brother first night Pretty darn windy out. We got here this afternoon, it was blowing real hard. We got in the blind and, uh, you know, kind of figured the deer were gonna be uh, not moving very much, but we did have one encounter with a decent buck. We had the decoy out. I think that's what brought him in, but then that's what also kind of freaked him out. And I think the wind too. So end of day one, ton of fun, can't wait for tomorrow. What a perfect first night. It couldn't have been any more perfect other than having that deer go west instead of east. But we were talking, I think that deer was actually bedded down the whole time because as we look up and all of a sudden this nice, what appeared to be a really nice eight pointer was, you know, 90 to 100 yards out in the grass. But super exciting for me to be able to sit in the stand knowing that there's these big giant bucks walking around. 
We had a doe and a couple fawns come in late. Can't wait to get up in the morning and sit in that stand again. I'm uh, Cyrus Mabudi and uh, I am an owner of uh, Double P Ranch. I have a background in biology and I was a graduate student in University of Hawaii and my partner at the time uh, grew up in uh, West Africa and had done a lot of bird hunting in his life and we were crazy enough we started looking for land and I have a, a, my doctorate in, in biology. Uh, I've, I've always had a very keen interest in conservation biology and restoration and uh, it's, it definitely, uh, I'd like to, to apply it here. You know, it, I always look at myself as, you know, the land will be here long after I'm gone and, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a being a painter and having an open canvas. Out on the, on the ranch we principally have whitetail deer, occasionally we'll see some mule deer. It's, you know, if it wasn't, you know, South Dakota obviously is known for pheasant hunting, but if it wasn't, if we didn't, weren't known so much for pheasant hunting, uh, the, the deer hunting is, is phenomenal. People are out shocked during, you know, with the rut when, you know, we're seeing a lot of those big deer where we'll have bow hunters coming in literally shaking white in the face where they've had an encounter with, with one of these, you know, huge bucks. We've had deer shot over, you know, last year we had a, a deer shot over 200 inches. And, but that's not to say that, you know, these are, these are around every corner. We have over probably 100 food plots that we put in. We leave cover up. And, you know, what we found that it pays to, you know, put in the time and effort and the money up front because it, it really creates, you know, fantastic wildlife habitat. Just getting geared up here, got out of the stand. Apparently there is a field full of roosters with our name on it. So we're gonna go have some fun this afternoon. Then get back at it tonight because there is a big buck with my name on it. Good job. How's it done there? The bird numbers are up this year by 76% over last year. South Dakota's birds are starting to make a climb. Whatever! 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 Good shot! Good girl, Camo. We smoked Turn that one. Down. Uh -uh. Nice Hungarian. So I've seen them spread out. They'll start talking to each other. And they'll, they'll come all back to each other eventually end up in the cubby like we just seen flush there.
Hold. Double P Ranch chef Chris Lee has worked in some of the finest restaurants in the United States. Now, Chris shares with Passion for the Hunt one of his favorite ways to bring pheasant from field to the table. I'm gonna do a recipe today that's gonna involve brining, and for those of you that don't know what brining is, brining is just a simple salt solution. It's more commonly used when, when you smoke turkeys. The really great thing about it is it imparts a, a lot of moisture into the bird, and you know, a lot of guys are really nervous about you know, cooking it because pheasant kind of has, you know, reputation of being really dry. So what I do is I brine it and uh, I find it works really well. And so I'm gonna show you that real quick. Um, you're gonna start with a bowl, um, at least two quarts, and you're gonna put in a gallon of water for every two birds that you're gonna brine. And generally what I do is I tell the guys to leave the breast on the cage. It seems to work best this way. It doesn't over brine and then you're gonna use a third of a cup of brown sugar, one cup of kosher salt. Um, in here I've got a quarter of a teaspoon of black peppercorns, um, just some crushed bay leaves, and about a half a teaspoon of whole clove. That's gonna go in there, as well as four cloves of crushed garlic, and just some thyme. And then what I do is I just take it and I whisk that all up. And you wanna make sure that the sugar and the salt is dissolved really, really well. And um, you're gonna to wanna to let this sit in the brine for a minimum of 12 hours up to no more than 24 hours. Um, if you over brine it, you know, the pheasant's gonna get a little salty. Uh, one example that, that I do out here at the lodge is I like, I like to do things with pheasant that a lot of guys haven't probably ever seen before. And, you know, just to kind of showcase the versatility of it, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a pizza with it. So what I have here are some onions and sun-dried tomatoes that I caramelized. And we're just gonna put this right on a piece of flatbread. Now you can, you can use any kind of flatbread, you can make your own, I made this, but uh, most stores carry flatbreads. You can just buy it right from the store. Uh, Lavash works really well for this. And I'm also gonna put some cheese on it. In this I have some sharp cheddar and I have a little bit of brie. And you're just gonna put that over the top. A little bit of the brie. And I've actually got some pheasant that I've already cooked. And we're just gonna put that right on top. And it's gonna go right into a 500 degree oven for about four minutes. So as you can see, the pizza only took about three to four minutes, as I said, in a 500 degree oven. You know, once you grill the pheasant, you know, a lot of times I'll just put it in a Ziploc bag and I'll put it in the cooler and you can use it in tacos, fajitas. We've made nachos out here out of it, um, salads. So again, you know, pheasant, when you handle it right, can be a very, very versatile protein. You know, I, I would pick this over chicken any day. And we're gonna go ahead and cut this pizza. That's it. Pheasant appetizer, flatbread pizza with caramelized onions, rosemary, and sun-dried tomatoes.
So you saw a big one, huh? <laughs> I did. I did. You know, he came down the far end of the plot. He started to feed the other way. As if he was going to exit, he went around a tree belt. I grunted. He responded very positively. I got jacked up. Of course, he came back. Then he just kind of stood there. Oh. Really didn't, uh, um, um, you know, really did come completely. Then he left again. And then I grunted again. So it's like high, low, high, low. You're all jacked yeah. up. Your heart's coming. And then I actually tried to snort weeds out. I'm thinking, you know, because we, you know, we get late in the evening. I want to make sure there's no camera light. But uh, Cyrus is not lying. They have good deer here. Yeah. yeah. You know, if, for people coming here, you know, the, the, the staff here is, you know, uh, second to none. Uh, the guides that we have now uh, have been on staff for a num number of years. We actually, our guides are professionally trained they go to guide school and uh, it shows whether it's a corporate group or a father and son daughters and all that that have never shot anything and all that and you know they spend a lot of time making sure that the trip is going to be a memorable trip for the, the lodge itself uh, Chris is always gets uh, rave reviews I've, I've always joked I might just change the name from double P ranch to Chris's Palace with pheasant hunting it might be a better name for it, but uh, wonderful uh, accommodations and it's first rate all around as far as the staff goes here. To learn more about Double P Ranch and book a trip, visit them at doublepranch.com. Passion for the Hunt has been brought to you by Shields. Arctic Shield, North Dakota Tourism, Crestliner Boats, and Polar Trailer. And by these other fine sponsors. Do you have a passion for the hunt? For shows, tips, trips, and product information, check out passionforthehunt.com. And for the latest photos and adventures, don't forget to like us on Facebook.